In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the comparison test for improper integrals in order to determine if an improper integral is convergent or divergent. Let's say we have two functions. We have the north function and the south function. So the north function would be the pink function here, as you can see. We're just going to call it n of s. And the south function would be the blue line here, or the blue function. And we're going to call it s of s. The comparison test theorem says that from a, which is a positive number, until infinity. So from a until infinity, if the north function is above the south function, and both of these functions are above the x-axis, then we know two things. First, if the north function, so here the north function, is convergent, then any function below that will be convergent as well. Okay, so as you can see, the arrow points downwards, or basically here it says if the north function is convergent, then the south function is convergent as well. The second thing that we know is that when the south function is divergent, then any function above that is also divergent. Or basically, if the south function is divergent, then the north function is also divergent. So I have summarized the comparison test theorem into four main steps. And don't worry, they're very easy to do. So just go ahead and copy this down and then we'll go through an actual example. Our first example is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the power of negative x squared dx. And we want to know if this improper integral is convergent or divergent. The first step says we have to make sure that this a must be greater or equal to 1. Now if we look over here, we see that the lower bound is not greater or equal to 1. So what do we do in this case? Well, all we have to do is split this integral up, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this integral here is equal to, as you can see, we split the integral from 0 to infinity into from 0 to 1, and then from 1 to infinity. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Now notice that e to the power of negative x squared is also the same thing as 1 over e to the power of x squared. So let's go ahead and change it. Now notice that this integral here is not improper, so we can ignore it. Now why is this not improper? Well, there is no infinity sign at the top or the bottom. And the second thing is that when x is between 0 and 1, the denominator is never equal to zero. So those are two signs that the integral is not improper. So this one here is indeed improper because there is an infinity sign here. So for step two, three, and four, we're going to focus onto this integral right here. And let's say after you solve it, this integral is convergent, then it means that our original function is convergent. And if this one is divergent, then this here will be divergent. The second step is to make sure that f of x, so f of x here, is larger or equal to zero, or meaning that it's above the x-axis when x is larger or equal to a. So basically, what that means is when, when x is larger or equal to one. So from one to infinity, we must show that one over e to the power of x squared is above the x-axis or larger than zero. And the way to prove it is to show that the numerator and the denominator are always above the x-axis. So if both of these are always positive, then it means that our function will always be positive too. So first of all, we know that when x is larger or equal to 1, then 1 or the numerator is also greater or equal to 0, which means that the numerator is positive. So the numerator is positive. And since e to the power of x squared is exponential, then we also know that it is above the x-axis. So e to the power of x squared is also above the x-axis or above 0, which means that the denominator, so denominator, is also positive. And because the numerator and the denominator are both positive, then it means that this function here is also positive. So this means that... 1 over e to the power of x squared, so f of x is also a positive function. The third step says to simplify f of x into g of x as an inequality. Our f of x is this one here, and we want to simplify it into another function g of x, 
and we need to have a greater or equal sign or less than or equal sign. Let me just show you how to do it. And there are many ways to do this, by the way. So let's start with e to the power of x squared because that's the most complicated place in this function. And because this is exponential, we can say that this here is larger or equal to x because x is linear and linear is smaller than exponential. So this is like saying 4 is larger than 3, which means that 1 over 4 is less than 1 over 3, right? This is just an example. So we can use this example to say that 1 over e to the power of x squared is smaller or equal to 1 over x. So as you can see, we now have our f of x, and this is our f of x here. And now we also have our g of x, which is 1 over x. And then we also have an inequality sign. So that's the way you do step number three, which is you start somewhere in this function. You can start anywhere you want, and you build it up into your f of x, and then you have your simplified g of x over here. Step four is the final step, and we're just going to put the integral sign on both sides like this. And the lower bound is one because we want the lower bound to be greater or equal to one, right? So according to this integral here. So if we find that the g of x integral is convergent, then our f of x integral is convergent. And if we find that the g of x integral is divergent, then the f of x function is divergent. Okay, so we just need to find if this one here is convergent or divergent, and then that will determine the final result. If you remember from the previous video, we have the 1 over x to the power of e formula. So if we have this integral, and we know that p is larger than 1, then this integral here is convergent. And if the p is smaller or equal to 1, then we know that this integral here is divergent. And using this formula, we know that this one here is divergent. This one here is divergent. And let's look at our two case scenarios in step number 4. It looks like this one is divergent then does it mean that this one here is divergent as well? Well, the answer is no, because, because the sign is greater than or equal to, but then this one is smaller or equal to. So it does not fit into these two case scenario, which means we just need to redo step number three. So this takes trial and error. So instead of saying x, we will say x to the power of two, right? So this takes trial and error, like I said, because it's larger than x to the power of 2, then this is like saying 4 is larger than 3, which means that 1 over 4 is smaller than 1 over 3, which means that 1 over e to the power of x squared is smaller or equal to 1 over x squared. And let's redo step number 4. This time, x is to the power of 2. So p is larger than 1, which means that this integral is convergent. So this integral here is convergent. Let's write that out. It looks like this case scenario here. So we found out that this here is convergent. And because the signs match, the signs match here, then our f of x is also convergent. So this here is convergent. So we just found out that this integral is convergent. And like we said before, if we find out that this one is convergent, then our original function will also be convergent. And so that is the answer to this question. We found out that the original function is a convergent integral. Let's do one more example. And this time, we want to determine if this integral here is convergent or divergent. The first thing I'm going to do is convert e to the power of negative x into 1 over e to the power of x, just to make it easier to see. And we are ready to start with step one. So step number one is to make sure that the lower bound is greater or equal to one. So we see here it is already one. So step one is already complete by itself. And we can move on to step number two. Step number two is to show that when, so when x is greater or equal to one, then f of x or this function must be greater than zero or it is above the x-axis. So the way to do it is to show that the numerator is greater than zero and the denominator is greater than zero. Let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, we know that the exponential e to the power of x is always above the x-axis. This implies that the reciprocal 1 over e to the power of x is also greater than zero. This means that 1 plus 1 over e to the power of x is greater than zero. 
So we determine that the numerator is always above the x-axis or positive. So the numerator is always positive. And then the denominator x. So when x is larger or equal to 1, then x here will also be greater than 0. Because if you look at this graph, you look at the, um, the linear function from 1 until infinity, we can see that the function is always above the x-axis. So that's what I mean when I say that x is always larger than 0. So we just show that the numerator and the denominator are always above the x-axis, which means that our function is always above the x-axis. So we completed step number two, and let's move on to step number three. So step three says to simplify f of x into g of x as an inequality. And basically what that means is we just have an inequality sign in the middle. So the first thing I'm going to do is start at the most complicated place in this function, and that would be 1 plus 1 over e to the power of x. And I'm just going to say that this here is larger than 1. Now, to turn this into our function, we need to divide both sides by x, as you can see here. So we have 1 plus 1 over e to the power of x. That's greater or equal to 1. And then we divide both sides by x. So we divide both sides by x. Now, notice that when we divide both sides by x, the sign stays the same. And this is because we say that x is from 1 to infinity. And this is from the fact that x is from 1 to infinity, or x is always a positive number. So that's why when we divide both sides by x, the sign stays the same. So in step number four, we need to find out if the g of x function is convergent or divergent. So if you look at this integral here, we see that the p value is 1 which means that this integral here is divergent. And since the g of x function is divergent, and we also see that the signs are the same, the signs match here, then it means that the f of x function is divergent as well. So this function here, this integral here, is going to be divergent as well. So we just determined that this integral here is divergent, which means that our original function, this one, is divergent. So that's the answer to this question, which is that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 plus 1 over e to the power of x over x is a divergent integral. I know that's a lot of information to take in today, and the fact that this requires trial and error, but I assure you that the more you practice, the, the easier that this problem gets. So try out these three problems here, and it, once you finish, you can check out the solution in the description. So thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and also subscribe if you haven't already. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.